You are probably familiar with the Boeing Aircraft Company and its various sophisticated and modern airplanes such as the Boeing 777. The world's largest aerospace and defense company was founded by William Edward Boeing, a child from a wealthy German family who settled in Detroit, Michigan. He was born on October 1, 1881. As an adult, Boeing was accepted into Yale University and graduated in 1903. After graduation, he joined his family business as a timber entrepreneur. The business made him wealthy, especially after he built his own lumber company in Grace Harbor. Despite his wealth, Boeing was never easily satisfied. Therefore, when he became the chief executive of the Greenwood Logging Company, Boeing, who had long experimented with ship designs, decided to move to Seattle. Moreover, he became even more fascinated with airplanes after seeing them at the Alaska Yukon Pacific Exposition in Seattle in 1909. This is where his interest in building airplanes began to grow, particularly from a business perspective. He bought a wooden shipbuilding factory near the Duwamish River, intending to convert it into an airplane factory. In 1915, he asked Glenn Martin, one of the first US-based aircraft developers, to teach him how to fly. In 1916, Boeing and George Conrad Westervelt founded an aircraft industry initially named Pacific Aero Products. A year later, as the United States became involved in World War I, Boeing changed the company's name to Boeing Airplane Company, known as Boeing Company. Its first revenue source came from the U.S. military when Boeing began producing various military patrol bomber aircraft in the 1920s and 1930s. This war also allowed Boeing as a company to secure a contract for 50 aircraft from the U.S. Army Air Corps. Boeing's business grew rapidly and became one of the giant companies in Seattle. With the United States entering the war, Boeing knew the U.S. Navy needed amphibious aircraft for training, so Boeing sent two new Model Cs to Pensacola, Florida, where the planes were flown for the Navy. After the war ended, Boeing had to diversify its portfolio and take advantage of the air mail spirit. They produced the B-1 mail plane for this sector, which even operated international services to neighboring Canada. In the mid-1920s, they began producing land-based air mail planes known as the Model 40. This was also an early aircraft design operated by Varney Airlines, Pacific Air Transport, and its airline, Boeing Air Transport. The Model 40 was a biplane, as was the larger Model 80 that followed in the late 1920s. However, as it entered the 1930s, Boeing shifted its emphasis to the twin-wing aircraft configuration. This resulted in the production of the Boeing 247 with an all-metal design that surpassed other contemporary aircraft in terms of speed and safety. A total of 75 Boeing 247 units were produced and operated by various commercial and military operators. In 1940, the Boeing Model 307 Stratoliner began operating with Pan Am in the early years of World War II. The Model 307 Stratoliner was designed to fly as high as 20,000 feet, making it the first pressurized cabin aircraft. However, Boeing only made 10 units of the aircraft as the conflict pushed it towards a change in focus. Before the war ended, Boeing built bombers such as the B-17 Flying Fortress and the B-29 Super Fortress. After World War II ended, Boeing sought to rise again by launching the new model 377 Stratocruiser design, which began operating in 1949 with Pan Am. However, sales of this fleet were low, with only a total of 56 aircraft. This forced Boeing to shift its focus to the development of jet-powered aircraft. Therefore, in the early 1950s, they developed a prototype known as the 36780. This was the beginning of the emergence of the Boeing 707, 
which resulted in the production of a four-engine jet aircraft and began operating with Pan Am in 1968. Beyond predictions, sales of this model increased sharply to 865 units plus 154 short 720 aircraft. This had a significant impact on the company. Although not the world's first jet aircraft, as the D. Heaviland Comet was dubbed, the Boeing 707 has been widely regarded as the catalyst for the jet age. This jet era marked a change in technology and society, resulting in new technology that made aircraft faster and larger. This allowed more people from diverse backgrounds to travel further. In the 1960s and 1970s, Boeing took quite extreme measures, starting to build aircraft and ground vehicles for NASA. There were two vehicles designed by Boeing specifically for NASA, namely the Lunar Roving Vehicle and the Lunar Orbiter. The Lunar Roving Vehicle was widely used on Apollo space flights in the 1960s and 1970s, while the Lunar Orbiter first traveled around the moon in 1966. In addition, Boeing also built the Mariner 10 spacecraft and the Saturn V rocket used by Apollo to fly humans to the moon in the late 1960s and 70s. Not only that, Boeing also designed and built vehicles to counter NASA's shuttle missions in the 1970s and continued to do so until NASA shut down the project in 2011. Boeing also began expanding its business by designing and building new helicopters, including the CH-47 Chinook and the CH-46 Sea Knight military helicopters, which were launched from the assembly line in 1961. Moreover, Boeing also developed missiles for the United States military, with the Minuteman silo-launched missile delivered in 1962. In addition to spacecraft and military equipment, Boeing produced its legendary Boeing 747 commercial aircraft and began operating it with Pan Am. You may be familiar with this aircraft, as the Boeing 747 is also known as the Jumbo Jet or the world's first wide-body aircraft. The uniqueness and greatness of the technology possessed by the 747 model made Boeing enjoy great success, selling more than 1,500 units. This aircraft was still in production for nearly 50 years, until that changed with the launch of the latest jumbo jets focusing primarily on twin-jet designs. Moreover, the presence of ETOPS allowed it to produce wide-body aircraft with dual engines and long-range flight capabilities. Computerization in the form of computer-aided design and manufacturing software in the form of CAD or CAM allowed Boeing to make the 777 aircraft in the 1990s without having to build a physical framework for the aircraft first, thus saving time and money for the aircraft company. After that, the 787 Dreamliner followed, but it caused some production problems for Boeing. Construction began in the early 2000s, but the Dreamliner only started fulfilling orders in 2011 because the aircraft routinely failed pressure tests and experienced production defects that hindered production. In 2013, further problems developed as the 787 was briefly banned from flying by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration due to the risk of battery fires on the aircraft. Fortunately, the 787 proved to be the fastest and most fuel-efficient passenger aircraft in the industry, and hundreds of orders poured in from airlines around the world ensuring another winning aircraft for the company, with annual revenues ranging from $66 billion to $101 billion from 2006 to 2019. Boeing also built narrow-body jets dubbed the Trijet 727 and led to the development of the twin-engine 757. Remarkably, both types of Boeing jets enjoyed a significant commercial success, each selling more than 1,000 units. In 2017, Boeing built and delivered hundreds of their aircraft each year, 
with a total pre-order price of $134.8 billion for more than 5737 models, the most ordered 94787 units, and 60 777 models. The company continued to produce aircraft at a high rate, making it the world's leading aircraft manufacturer in 2019. Currently, Boeing is trying to introduce its latest 777X series, consisting of the 7788 and 7779 variants. The 777X series is the next generation wide body aircraft expected to enter service within the next few years. For your information, the 7779 series aircraft is assembled at the Boeing Everett factory near Seattle and is the longest aircraft in the world.